Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. I am your host, as always, Mr. Matt Hinshaw, based out of the beautiful Prescott, Arizona, that is, can't decide if it wants to be fall or winter or summer. With me, as always, my good buddy, on the other side of the planet, Mysterious Mike Talent. Hey, everybody. So, Mike, how's Harvest Horror Fest going so far? Uh, I think it's going well. Uh, I'm excited to talk about the new movies that we're uh, about to review, or the new movie we're reviewing this week, or we will review this week, and the next movies after that. I don't know. We were even just discussing off the pod about adding an additional one, uh, one that you like. I don't know if saying I like it is fair, but it's fun. It's entertaining. Universal yeah. uh, Studios Orlando actually made a maze of it, what, this year, right? I think? Yes, yes. I, I do think that uh, part of uh, the uh, Halloween Horror Nights that takes place at Universal Orlando and Universal Hollywood Studios, the one in Orlando, I think, has the uh, killer clowns from outer space. Oh, great. Um, See, now you ruined it. Oh, ruined man. it, Mike. Jesus. All right. Sorry. It's okay, Mike. It's okay. We'll let it slide. All right. So what are we talking about then this week if we're not talking about, well, this week, actually this Tuesday, because we're going back to two a weeks for now until the end of Harvest Horror Fest. Yeah. So we're talking about the movie Gemini Man. Um, do you want me to go into the rundown map? Is this a uh, Gemini man like Gemini the space program? No, this is not Gemini man the space program. And it is not in any related way to the 70s TV show. They had a 70s TV show about Gemini man? Yeah, I think it was kind of like the million dollar man or something like that. Like just, I don't know, a series. I don't know, man. Huh. It was before our time. Which is hard to say nowadays. Yeah, it is. All right, Mike. So go ahead, do it. Give us a rundown on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air versus Will Smith. I mean, Gemini Man. All right. So we got... <laughs> yes, that's appropriate uh, intro, Matt. Good job. Uh, so we uh, have uh, Gemini Man, directed by Ang Lee. Uh, writers are David Benhoff, Billy Ray, Darren Limke. And it's starring Will Smith, Mary Elizabeth, Clive Owen, Benedict Wong, Douglas Hodge, and an over-the-hill hitman faces off against a younger clone of himself. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, which you know where, what she's from, right? Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Yep. And Fargo, the TV show. Oh, okay. Do, do you watch the Fargo TV show, Mike? No, I've never had a chance to get into it. Dude, it's really good. It's as good, if not better than the movie. It's they are different inclusive stories for each season. Kind of like um, that one show you were trying to get me to watch on HBO, uh, True Detective. Oh, yeah. True Detective or even, I guess, American Horror Stories like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you watching that, too? I know we talked about it. No, I wanted to. I just haven't had a chance. But, like, this year's, like, 1980s, like, like isn't that what it is? It's, like, 1980s? Yeah, it's called uh, American Horror Story 1984, and it's kind of a spoof or take on a uh, Friday the 13th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I mean, I grew up watching those movies, so I love the Friday the 13th series, even though they're pretty terrible. I'm about uh, three episodes in. I'm I'm either three or four in. I'm like two behind like what's airing right now. And it's interesting. Um, it's cool seeing Carrie Fisher's daughter get some more work. I like that. Of course, you had to bring up the Star Wars tie-in, Matt. It's all about the wars. It's the only thing that matters, Mike. It's about the wars. We got, you know, less than 30 days until The Mandalorian... And then we got less than two months until we got the new film. So is The Mandalorian 
come out on launch with the um, new uh, Disney Plus service, streaming service? I believe the first episode is coming out on launch, yeah. Just the first one. Oh, just the first episode. It's They're not going to do the next Netflix style of like everything all at once, right? No, as far as I know, uh, Disney is going to do more serial releases. So they're going to do like one every week kind of thing. Oh, uh, uh, okay. That's kind of lame. Yeah, well, especially if you're a binger, but I, I'm not much of a binger. Are you a binger, Mike? Heck yeah, I'm a binger. It's the only way I can get stuff done sometimes because you find a little bit of block of time. And you're like, ah, watch it all now. Well, I'm talking, I'm not talking about booze, Mike. No, I said watch. Oh, okay, okay. Because we all know you're a binge drinker. But as far as a binge watcher, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Well, well, Matt, speaking of that, I got my first hate mail uh, on the Real Film Nerds, Mike at RealFilmNerds.com. And, you know, I think we just stopped doing it, not because of uh, complaints, but I don't know. We were just trying different things with the format. And anyway, Matt, I need to ask you, what are you drinking now so I don't get any more hate mail? And then I can explain what I'm drinking. Wow. Is that all it takes? It takes one hate mail for us to add something to the pot. I love it. Well, when our numbers are, you know, we've got like five people. So it's like when one person emails you. Yeah. One of the five is the one emailing about the hate. Yeah. It it was a very, very funny, uh, uh, tersely worded uh, uh, email about us dropping and caving to the pressures of PC America. <laughs> oh, do you have the email in front of you? I think you should read it aloud on the air, Mike. No, I don't think I'll do that. But damn it, um, Mike! <laughs> I could, but I, I don't think I don't think it's necessary, man. But it was it was very. Uh, I had a great laugh. I enjoyed it. So, Matt, I do seriously want to know what are you drinking. <sighs> All right, Michael, I am drinking a seasonal pumpkin beer that I don't know if you've ever had. We've discussed it before, I think, on the pod. It's a Four Peaks Pumpkin Porter. Mm, man, that sounds delicious. I love pumpkin beers. And this is the time of year when they come out. Yeah, and well, the pumpkin man. porters, man, around here for Four Peaks have been hard to get. Because uh, they're just selling out everywhere. And they came out in September, but you can still find them here and there. And uh, it's a delightful beer because I like it because it doesn't have an overwhelming sense of pumpkin. Okay. So you don't like it too, like, pumpkin pie or too much nutmeg type spice in there? Yeah, I'm not a pumpkin spice latte person. Oh, man. You You didn't get the PSL when it first came out in August? No, negative Ghost Rider. Oh, okay. Well, well, my I guess Matt. What IPA are you drinking today? Oh, oh man, it's exciting. It's not actually an IPA. Liar. It's, no, no, it's not. It's just an ale. It's just an ale, and it's uh, it's called After Sesh, and it's a uh, ale brewed with orange lime and salt, and it's uh made by. A brewery out of Florida called Cigar City. Cigar City? And they brew beer? Yeah, yeah. That used to be the nickname of uh, uh, Tampa, I believe. Oh, interesting. Is that because that's where Monica Lewinsky's from, or what? No. (laughs) Gosh. No, Matt. No, no, not with your dirty, dirty mind. No, I think a lot of cigars were made there uh, at one point. Hey, we're talking impeachment, you know, might as well bring up the other guy that was impeached for having some fun in the White House. Why not? Right. Okay. I mean, yeah, it all ties together. You're right. So, uh, speaking about Gemini, man... (laughs) Mike, what'd you think of the movie? Oh, Matt, you know how you always harp on that thing called story? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Very well. Um, this seemed like it could have been a cool movie, and there was some pretty cool action scenes, although the way that some of the stuff was filmed was sort of, I don't know, it just seemed like it was, 
it didn't have any filter. I don't know. It seemed almost more like a GoPro kind of like filming. I don't know, like ultra realistic. Did, I don't know. What, now, did you what, get what, to what, see it in 120 frames per second in 3D like they shot it and intended it to be seen? I think I did because it said high frame, high frame roll. It said H F R. So I think that was high frame rate. Uh, typically that's what uh, that is. Yeah. And, and in 3d and it was weird and in 3d. Okay. Cause I did not, our theaters here are not big. There's only according to the slash film cast who actually looked this up and wrote a story about it and everything. There are only 14 theaters in the entire country that can do 120 frames per second and 3d at the same time. And f- not even, but not even at 4k, it's only 2k. And there's 14 in the entire country. Well, you seem to have found one of them. Wow. Uh, I don't even think I was trying to, but I needed to watch it early in the morning, so I had to buy the more expensive ticket. Ah, that's what did it. Well, um, I did not see it in 120 frames. It looked like a normal movie to me. Uh, It was... um, The action sequences, like you're talking about, some are really, really good, and some are just god-awful. And the story uh, is lackluster, but the acting is always phenomenal. Will Smith is always really, really good. And I like Mary Elizabeth uh, Winstead, but she felt underused in this film to me. So yeah. that's my first impressions of Gemini Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the stuff that was, uh, you know, off for me was the story of this seemed like it could have been much better but it just kind of fell flat for me. It just, there was really not a lot of motivations of why characters were doing things and things resolved themselves a little too easy. I felt on certain aspects of the story, which I'm not trying to spoil. So that's why I'm not saying much, but I I don't know. Well, I, I guess is, is, uh, is that what you thought, Matt? Or um, I was really hoping that this was the good cycle of Ang Lee. Like now, that's like two movies bad in a row. I think. Yeah, I was keeping my fingers crossed because, as we discussed in our last pod about Ang Lee, he's hit or miss. And in my book, this is definitely a miss. And I, you know, um, again, according to Slash Film, because I listen to them weekly, uh, specifically their news podcast, I really like. I guess this script has been passed around Hollywood for the past 10 years. And so that is why one of the script writers is a very famous name on it, even though the last time he touched it was probably eight or nine years ago, is uh, David Benioff from Game of Thrones. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is that is a uh, famous script writer. But wow, 10 years ago, this has just been floating around? They've been trying to get this film made for 10 years, and everyone kept saying it was the technology and all this, and it got passed through a bunch of different script writers, and that's why I think the script was such a giant mess. Yeah, and Matt, well, what did you think of the technology of uh, Will Smith versus uh, Will uh, Fresh Prince? Like, did you, like, I found it a little distracting, the Fresh Prince scenes. Well, now, Mike, do you know the, a lot of people are getting this wrong. It is not Will Smith playing both parts. I mean, it is, but it isn't. The younger Will Smith is actually 100% CGI. It's not a de-aging technique like what they've used in the Marvel films. Oh, so did they... They probably still had a person there, right? And they just yeah, I assume CGI'd over them like like a like a green screen or green suit or something. Yeah, I'm sure they had like a mocap person or something like that. And then obviously Will Smith did his own voice. But as far as I understand, it was not a de aging, so it was a complete reconstruction, a lot like in the vein of uh, Alita Battle Angel. Oh, okay, yeah, that was really good though. Yeah, and. Th- Okay, so Will Smith, the problem I had, Will Smith looks really, really good. The young, you know, Fresh Prince looks really good when he's not talking. When he starts moving his lips, it just, it falls apart for me. It looks so bad. Yeah, the the talking was definitely something that I noticed, but I wasn't sure if, if it was just me. But hearing you say that, man, that, that reinforces, I, I don't know, I, I feel like, they 
drop the ball. I'm sure it costs so much money already to do all that stuff, but I don't know. It just... That was a little hard sell for me, and that was probably part of the reason I didn't like the movie as much. But still, the story's just kind of weak, man. Like, I don't know. It just... It fell flat for me, man. It, it, I didn't believe a lot of things. It just happened too quickly. Some of the stuff, some of the bonding type things and stuff. I'm like, what? No way. Well, it's a story that's been done over and over and over and over and over again of the uh, clone and, you know, going up against him and things like that. There's not a whole lot out there about it, but there's a few. And this one didn't do anything special. The Probably the most special thing is that why they cloned him because they wanted this badass assassin that could shoot someone in a, a, a bullet train from two miles away kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that is why they did it. He's just, he was awesome. They identified him as an awesome assassin when he was a lot younger and decided to make a clone of him. It was just, I don't know. It's just a weird, it's a weird story. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, anything special it was just it was what it was i guess is a good way to put it yeah i miss the old uh will smith sci-fi movies that were pretty pretty good like your uh your men in black and your your um i am legend independence day uh i am legend was pretty good yeah i liked that that. a lot yeah 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 no that was good yeah um i i miss miss all miss all those movies well I don't know, man. I mean, what what was the movie that Will Smith did before this? Do you know? Um, and click on the. It wasn't Suicide Squad, was it? Oh God, was it? I'm gonna click uh, on it on the IMDb's and I'm gonna look. Actor, 81 credits. You know what? I think it was Aladdin, wasn't it? Oh, I bet it was Aladdin. Yeah. Yes, he was Blue Genie. There's something here called Student of the Year, but that was like a special appearance in a song and then there's a couple shorts but yeah i think it was aladdin and i don't know what you thought about aladdin but uh aladdin was not a great movie it wasn't a horrible movie it definitely wasn't as bad as lion king and will smith probably was the saving grace in that movie yeah i think the new Aladdin, I, I saw that. I didn't see the new Lion King, but I, I did see the new Aladdin. And the new Aladdin was okay. The parts that I didn't like about the movie really was just the sped up dancing scenes, or I don't know what they did, but some kind of weird stylized stuff with the dancing, all that stuff. I, it was just odd. Well, speaking of weird sped up dancing, Mike, how does Gemini Man relate? to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know if that was uh, the best tie-in, but I'm going to take it, Matt. Uh, Jim and I, man, relates to the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, with uh, Benedict Wong, uh, who is... He... uh, Played um, in Doctor Strange, Avengers Infinity War, or, yeah, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, he played Wong. (laughs) You got to use his real name in the movie, right? (laughs) Yeah, he did. Yeah, he was was an interesting character in this film for sure. Yeah, I wish they would have explored some of his... um, marine buddies a little bit more i mean besides you saw him a little bit they said they served together and they did a shot and then that was like all we got well and then they whenever they uh shook hands they both had the uh spade on their forearm yes that's true and that was about it to let you know that hey there's something else kind of going on here mm-hmm so, all right, Mike. Well, you wanna you wanna spoil Gemini Man? I, I yeah. I mean, I guess well, I guess okay. I guess I do. Let's do this. Let's do this. Should people go and spend their hard earned money to go watch Gemini Man in the theaters? I would say no, not at all. That makes two of us. 
I think if you want to see the technological achievements of the film, maybe wait until you can rent it at Redbox or something. But even then, that might be pushing it. Because, I mean, this was not a great movie. No, it wasn't a great movie. It's hard to recommend. That's what she said? The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the there was some kind of cool action stuff, and I felt like they tried to do a little bit more realistic type fighting stuff in the vein of uh, you know John Wick kind of stuff. But it's only in a couple parts of the movie, and then it's over. Well, all right. So since we're in the spoiler territory, I'm going to go there. Some of the action scenes were shot really well and look really, really good. And one in particular bothered the living hell out of me, and it was absolute garbage. Do you know which one I'm talking about, Mike? Um, I think you can guess it. The motorbike one? Yeah, the whole scene when he like uses the freaking motorcycle as like a weapon. <laughs> You know, he's sitting here trying to kill him and he decides to hit him with the freaking tire of the bike and make him jump up. Why not just pull out a gun? He had a gun. Just pull out a gun. Shoot him. You're right, Matt. That scene was pretty ridiculous. Uh, But on a visual standpoint, it looked visually cool. So there's always that. Well, everything leading up to that point, the chase through town all that stuff but when he's off the bike and he's hitting them and but uh it was just rough for me it was rough for me but at least they're pretty realistic like when he hit him in the face with the back tire like he, it shows like road rash on his face and stuff so that was cool yeah 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 and that was throughout the whole movie right it was consistent yeah and so that was nice seeing stuff like that where you know he gets his ass kicked and it still resonates throughout the rest of the film so that was nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they both got hurt, and they did show injuries to the people. Like, yeah, they're pretty much superhuman crazy guys, but they still got rocked here and there. Yeah. So what about uh, Clive Owen? I was kind of – I love Clive Owen. I think he's a very, very good actor. But like Mary Elizabeth Winstead, I think he was very underutilized in this role. Yeah, this this looks like it was just kind of a paycheck. Maybe there was supposed to be more, but the the story, you know, like he's the father of of the character of Fresh Prince. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> Little Willie, and uh, yeah, you got and, and you got Big Willie and, style, and you got Little Willie style. Yeah, yeah, Little Willie style. Uh, and he's like. He's like, oh, you're my son. You got to go do this. This will make you like a man or something. It was like a weird, like, nothing really made sense about what his character. He was just like a, he seemed like a mean kind of, like, uh, extremely demanding, you know, military type guy. But then somewhat was supposed to be nurturing for his son. I don't know, man. Like, the contradictions didn't really seem to work for me. It was weird. It was, it was very strange. Because, yeah, well, like even Will Smith was pointing out, he uh, when he first met him and he was going through training in the Marines before they were being shipped off, like he drowned him and then revived him. Yeah, yeah. And now he says, you're ready. You can, you can serve for, with me or whatever. Yeah. And so then, you know, Little Willie style, he, I, maybe he did that stuff, but you don't know he did. So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think the story would have been better off if they had just cloned Will Smith and there wasn't this whole father-son dynamic involved with the one guy. He could have just been his boss. Yeah, or or like the, again, we're in spoilers, we can do this now. The third Will Smith, you know, little, little Willie style that can't, doesn't feel any pain and is like superhuman strength and jumping all over the place. Just use it like that. Don't have this. Yeah, whole... that that is uh, Spider Man, uh, Little Willy style. Spider Willy. <laughs> yeah, Spider Willy. <laughs> oh man, that's that's yeah, Spider Willy. <laughs> but yeah, that was. I felt kind of bad, but 
he wasn't really a person. I don't know. See, that's the thing, though, about the clone movies and things like that. You start discussing, are clones human beings, you know, and it starts going down that slope. Yeah, this movie didn't have any of those questions, though, man. Like, this movie didn't try and address any kind of, like, are, should clones be illegal or any... Like, it just... There there were there was one. It works for this kind of evil company that does military black ops. Yeah. The, the yeah. only part that they kind of had that in a little bit was the very end when literally they're discussing the third clone with the second clone in there and Clive Owen is in there. That's literally the only dialogue about clones and if you should or if you shouldn't and that's it. And basically Clive Owen's argument, which is a valid one, is that we're cloning you so that we don't have to send our soldiers and our troops out. We can send your clones instead. And then we're not sending body bags back to, you know, parents of their kids. Yeah. So in that way, Matt, I guess we should just bring up Star Wars. It's all about the wars. And the Clone Wars. Everybody loves the Clone Wars, Mike. Do you watch the Clone Wars? I'm excited for that seventh season. It's going to be awesome. No, I haven't seen it, but uh, I've heard it's uh, fantastic. It's really, really, really good. It really is. I like it. I'm looking forward to that seventh season. But okay, fine. I'll stop talking about the wars. Mike, anything else you want to add about the phenomenal film that you should not go see in the theaters known as Gemini Man? Ah, uh, no, I think we've covered everything that we're going to talk about. Yep, don't 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 spend your money on it. Like maybe watch it if it's on free on Netflix or Amazon, but Yeah, and even then it's not for the story. It's more for the visuals and more for the uh, action. And again, a lot of the action wasn't good, but I don't know. It was very um uh reminiscent of like a uh like 80s or 90s like action movie. Yeah, I guess so, but it just wasn't, I don't know, man, it just didn't have that flow, things were just weird, I, I felt like some of the decisions that characters made were weird, and I don't know. So, I got one for you. How the hell did Wong go from having this, granted it was a really nice airplane, the float plane, turboprop float plane, to a, like, G6 or something? They don't explain that at yeah, all. The golf stream? No. Um, I figured he called up that really rich guy that was their buddy, the, but he was dead. Yeah. And then he, but he still knew like the pilot of that guy. And he was like, hey, man, can I borrow the plane? I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. You're Jimmy's buddy? Yeah. That actually makes sense because that one dude was super crazy rich. And he had that giant boat that, you know, uh, Big Willie style went and climbed on and then the dude got killed. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed how the CIA was spying on them and uh, heard everything they were saying and stuff, but they like, when he told them like this key point of thing, he just typed it in the screen. Yeah. It's like they knew they were being watched. Well, and then also they, uh, when he goes to meet up with the uh, Russian diplomat guy, or was he a businessman or something? I don't know. I don't know who what he was. I think he was a Russian. I felt like he was a um, mob boss or or somebody in charge of a lot of stuff. Like KGB, maybe. Maybe. Well, so when he went and talked to that dude, I love that little line that he threw in there about how it was a pleasure to watch you, you know, kick some ass or see you work or something like that. And so they were watching the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he was a uh, part of the CIA, but like the Eastern Division. I don't know. I don't think so. I think he clearly was part of the Russian government, and that's why Will Smith went to him because he could definitely confirm that his source was real or whatever. I think that's what he was doing, something like that. Anyways, all right. Okay, Mike. So, uh, how many reels do you give Big Willie, Little Willie, and Spider Willie Styles film Gemini Man? Uh, I'm going to give this two and a half reels. I guess that's fair. I, I figured you were going to be harsher than that, Mike. I'm kind of kind of disappointed. Oh, oh, uh, you thought it? I would put like one or one and a half? No, I, I mean, it was, there was a couple parts that were okay in it. You're just a big fan of uh, Ang Lee? No, not a big fan of Ang Lee at all. Oh, interesting. Big fan of the Willies. 
I, you know, I used to like a lot of the Will Smith movies, but lately he hasn't come out with as many good ones. Well, the reason why I say it's surprising that you rated it so high is because I give it two and a half reels as well. Oh, man, you're right. I should have been harsher, right? Yeah, because we never, we don't, we don't agree on no, things. No, because I really was not a big fan of this film, like, whatsoever. Yeah. It's kind of boring. I could, I was shocked it was two hours long, too. Yeah, it was two hours. I felt every minute of it. <laughs> How many times did you check your phone? Several. Several? <laughs> so you're turning into one of those phone people in the theater? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Or are you checking your watch? Use your Apple watch. I was checking the watch. Oh, see, the truth comes out. Well, all right, Mike, what, el- what else do you want to add about uh, Gemini Man? Because I don't really have much other than I don't think anybody should go see it. No, I don't really think anybody should see it. Even if you're really bored and you have two hours of your life. Just save save that time for something else. Go watch like, um, Clone Wars. Yeah, go watch Clone Wars or border, play Borderlands 3 or, or get outside and take a walk. Oh, see, you had to do it, didn't you, Mike? You had to do it. What what, what was that? What did I have to so, do? So I found this badass gun in Borderlands 3. And I saw a story <laughs> pop across my news feed, you know, my Google populated news feed because it spies on me. So it knows what I do. Yes, yes. Uh, Google knows everything you do. Right. Yes. And I found a legendary weapon. And you know how hard it is to find legendary weapons in Borderlands. Well, they're a lot more prominent now in Borderlands 3, which is cool. That is cool. Guess what uh, legendary weapon I found that also popped up as a news story? Uh, I have no idea, so I'm just going to let you go. Okay. I figured you might have seen it because you're a tech person, but... The one of the developers, I'm not sure if it's one of the head developers or creators or what, but tweeted to Elon Musk that he was putting his flamethrower in the game. Oh, that's awesome. You have the flamethrower? And I found it. It is hilarious. I did not even realize it was tied to Elon Musk's whatever the hell his flamethrower is called, but it is hilarious. It is a submachine gun that shoots flames and it doesn't shoot it far. And then when you reload it, it's a TDR. I don't know if you remember what the TDR weapons are. Back in the day, the TDR, you'd throw them and they would explode and you'd reload and there'd be a new one. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in Borderlands 3, they do a lot more than just explode. And so on Elon Musk's, you reload it and you throw it. It grows legs and it runs around chasing after the enemies, shooting them. <laughs> That's awesome. It is amazing. Oh, that that is so awesome, man. Oh, and there was a full is... news story about this on one of my tech news feeds. And I was like, oh, man, now it makes sense. Now I understand where that game came from. That gun. Oh, that's so awesome. So does this inspire you to get Borderlands 3 yet? Uh, it's it's getting there, yeah. That's, that's a lot closer. Well, yeah. I'm already a level 30 on my main guy. On my second one, I'm a level seven, and then uh, my nephew was visiting this weekend, and we played together on my console, and the, my third one is a level six. So you have three characters already. All right. Awesome. Yeah, and I don't like any of the classes. I like the classes are kind of weak, but anyways. All right, I'll stop talking about Borderlands. Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about Thursday's episode, our second Harvest Horror Fest podcast of the year? Oh, I would love to, Matt. So, yeah, Matt just told you about a Harvest Horror Fest. The movie that we're going to review this coming Thursday is Children of the Corn from 1984. So, you know, everybody, you should tune back in for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, is it corn with a K or corn with a C? Corn with a C. Okay. All right. So this is before the other corn. All right. All right. Yes. Dude, lots of uh, Stephen King movies this year, huh? Yeah, yeah, with Doctor Sleep, um, the uh, you can do it. What I'm trying to think, uh, Pet Cemetery, It Chapter Two, It Part t- Two. Yep. Um, wasn't there a couple Stephen King inspired movies on Netflix that showed up too? Was it Netflix or was it Hulu? I think it was Netflix. Well, I think there might have been one on Hulu. Okay. 
right. then two on Netflix. Dude, he is like the godfather of horror. Like, not I don't want to say horror films. He's the godfather of the horror genre. Uh, yeah, he's. I mean, he's definitely a prolific uh, creator of scary content. So I watched Children of the Corn with my nephew last night. Uh, and nice. he was just ragging on it like the whole time and i'm like dude just shut up let me watch the movie and he kept ragging on it i was like that's it at midnight i put on hereditary and he couldn't sleep <laughs> you made him watch hereditary yep. i asked him if he'd ever seen it and he couldn't sleep and the thing that creeped him out the most and he didn't even notice until i pointed it out was when uh spoilers for hereditary um tony collette is like up in the corner of the rooms and stuff and you can't even really see her and then I was like, look in the corner of the frame, Michael. And he looked and he's like, oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, stealthily done and fantastic. And then, of course, all today he was doing, you know, the. Uh... <laughs> of course. Oh. oh, Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was pretty good. So. Anyways, all right, Mike, back on to our topic of ending the podcast. Uh, I don't have anything else. I'm good. Your turn. All right. Well, I guess uh, with that, we will go ahead and wrap this up. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll catch you on the next pod. In studio with me now on Magic 99.1 from the Real Film Nerds podcast, it is Matt Hinshaw. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing great. I have to tell you, before we get started on the movie you saw this weekend, I saw Joker on Saturday night. What What were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it was a good movie. It was, like you said, very dark, very sad. I, I mean, I think I was crying when I left the theater um, because it's so real. But Joaquin Phoenix just hit it out of the park. Right? He's so good. <laughs> Yeah. Such a good actor. I probably would not have seen that movie if he hadn't been the star. Understandable. Yeah. I, I would say the same thing. It wouldn't be the yeah. same film without Joaquin Phoenix playing the Joker. Right. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I uh, I give it five magic wands. Five magic I wands. Do. That's wow. what I give it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in this morning to talk about Gemini Man. I didn't see that one, but you did. What'd you think? I recommend you don't see it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so it was. It, it's a tough. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. Will Smith always does a great job. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who plays the female lead role, she's a great actress, but she just felt underutilized in this film. It, yeah, the script is the biggest issue. It's just awful. It was directed by Ang Lee. I don't know if you know oh, Ang Lee. Yeah, I do. Brokeback Mountain. Right. Um, Life of Pi, stuff Great like movies. that. Great movies, yes. Yeah. So he, as I've noticed, he does either really good or really bad. Oh, really bad, bad. okay. And this is, in, this is in the middle. It's not his worst film. It's not his best film, that's for sure. Okay, all right. It uh, came in third place at the box office. Does that surprise you? No. No. It, it probably should be lower. Lower, but that's people, what I thought. It was opening weekend start, and you know people went and saw it. Um, there's a little interesting thing that Ang Lee did with this I'll talk about for a second. He shot it in a style that no one else has shot, and there's only a handful of movie theaters in the country that can do it. He shot it in 4K, 3D, at 120 frames a second. Wow. Yeah, your typical film that you go and watch in a theater is 24 frames a second. Okay. So it has what they call motion smoothing look or the soap opera look. Our theaters here don't have that, so I saw it in our theaters. I don't know if it added much. My co-host actually got to see it in the theater that did 120 frames a second. But yeah. wasn't it 4K? It was at like Ultra HD, which is like 2K technically. Okay. And he said it kind of made him a little motion sick and stuff. And it oh. was like almost like too sharp. And so. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, you wonder why he chose to do that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. There, there's a couple really good action scenes. There's one that's really bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was shot well. It yeah. was acted well. The script was just probably the biggest issue. Okay. All right. So, well, so how many reels do you give it? I, I give it two and a half. Two and a half out of four or five. I can never out of remember. Five, yeah. Out of five. So yeah, yeah save your money. And uh, save your time. Yeah. If uh, it comes out on Redbox, maybe. Maybe. But even then, I'm still like, I don't know. I mean, the technological advances are cool. Like, a lot of people keep thinking they did what they did in 
Marvel where they de-aged Will Smith. Yeah. They didn't. It's more like Alita Battle Angel. It's a completely constructed character. It's okay. some dude probably standing there in a green green suit kind of thing. And so the guy, um, Will Smith, voiced himself and he voiced his younger self in... The CG looks great until yeah. the uh, young Will Smith, I call him Fresh Prince Will Smith, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> starts talking. When he starts talking, his mouth just does not look right. It doesn't. It, does it doesn't not. match up. No. All right. Well, we appreciate you being honest with us about the film. And if you guys want to hear the podcast, it's real, as in R-E-E-L, Film Nerd. You can get it anywhere. Yep. iTunes, Spotify, wherever. Wherever. YouTube, I'm everywhere. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.